From Elaphrosaurus to Eotyrannus and Omisaurus to Orodromius, roar some more for the greatest race of all time. Welcome to the Dino Show. Each week we watch on as two Mesozoic monsters race to get their claws on the Dino Dome Cup. But there's a catch. The race course is never predictable. From blustery blizzards to the barren bush, anything goes in the Dino Dome. I'm your host, Amanda Shalala, and please give a warm welcome to our friendly Factosaurus, Tim Richards. Oh, I'm as happy as a hadrosaur to be here. Let's, Let's get, get ready, ready to roll! like a flying dinosaur squirrel. Give it up for the glider and Bobtory! <laughs> and from Lake Cretaceous Australia, she's as tall as a person, but only as heavy as a labradoodle, with wings as wide as a car. She has a mouth like a spear with terrifying teeth. Oh, I was waiting for this day to come. Domas, Tabunaga Shorai was described by none other than our very own Mesozoic master, Mr. Tim Richards. What's it like seeing your discovery in the flesh? Just incredible. I'm really only equated with her snout, so this is quite a sight. It's like seeing your baby all grown up. Well, it's time to leave the nest, Tuppy. Let's see where our two flyers will be racing today. <laughs> Lots of thick vines, tropical flowers. Birds, bugs. It's hot and humid too. It's looking like a rainforest. Well, not just any rainforest. This is the Dane Tree, the world's oldest tropical rainforest. Wow. The Dane Tree is about 180 million years old. So that's older than all the Cretaceous critters and even some of the Jurassic dinos too. Tuppy's from the Cretaceous. Is this her home turf? More like her neighbouring suburb. Uh, but I don't think it'll be an advantage. She's used to soaring over a vast inland sea, not navigating dense rainforest canopies. Yes, the race course looks like it starts in the thick of it. Our racers will have to move through the vines and trees, cross a raging river and get down to the finish line at the bottom of a stony gorge. I'm not even going to ask who you're going for, Tim. Oh, family first. It's Tuppy for the win. Well, good luck, Ambo. On your marks. Get set. Dinos, Dinos go! I know we said dinos go, but we know that pterosaurs aren't dinosaurs. They're flying reptiles. That's right. In this race, we only have one dinosaur, Ambopteryx, or Ambo for short. She's from a clade of climbing and gliding dinosaurs, so you can see she has feathers on her body, like her raptor cousins. But she has hairless membrane wings, like a bat for gliding. She seems right at home here. She's launched herself onto a tree trunk and is climbing straight up into the canopy. Well, yes. This would have been exactly the type of environment Ambo lived in. It's unlikely she spent much time on the ground. And Tuppy? She's a pterosaur. In fact, she's Australia's largest pterosaur well, that we know of. Yeah, she's huge and making slow progress over these gnarled roots and twisting branches. <laughs> She doesn't have enough room to open her wings. And pterosaurs aren't so nimble when they walk on all fours. Ambo's having no trouble getting into the trees. 
Yes, she has long hands and strongly curved claws for climbing and moving around among tree branches. She's got an impressive lead so far. I can't wait to see her aerial skills. Yeah. Look, here she goes. Oh. She's up, up. Oh, no. She's going down. What was that? Well, just because you have wings doesn't mean you can fly. <laughs> She's a clumsy glider at best. Don't her feathers help? Well, they're not like bird feathers today. Hers are stiff, short and densely packed, probably to keep warm. Well, it's not pretty, but she's making great progress through the dane tree. Let's check in with Tuppy. Oh, no! She's tangled up in vines. She's barely made it past the starting line. Come on, Tuppy, use your noggin. Your name is Spearmouth. Her mouth is like a spear. It's huge and long and full of razor-sharp teeth. Pterosaurs are famous for their big heads, but maybe not so much for their brains. <laughs> Just bite through the vines, Tuppy. That's it. She's slicing and dicing through the greenery like a salad samurai. She's free. Tuppy has entered the chat. I can't believe it. She's climbing a bull cowrie, the tallest trees in this rainforest. Why are you so shocked, Tim? Well, huge pterosaurs like Tuppy are not thought of as good climbers. With those long, folded wings, she's not that coordinated. Between all the scrabbling and flapping, she's getting up there. Well, it's probably her first time climbing a tree. Tuppy's making her way up the bull cowrie. She's pushing through the rainforest canopy. She can see the light. And she's away. Oh, isn't she majestic? She would have soared over this very rainforest on her way to her hunting grounds, the Eramanga Sea. Where's that? Well, it doesn't exist anymore. It was a vast inland sea that cut right through Queensland. Looks like something's happening in the canopy. Is that Ambo? Let's get a closer look. Oh, no! Oh, I think she's taken a tumble. Just straight into a nest of sugar gliders. Are the gliders safe? Is she a carnivore? We think she's an omnivore, so she does go for meat and veg, but I reckon they're OK. Look. Are they licking her? Look, sugar gliders are normally very territorial, but this looks like some kind of social grooming. Ambo has been nicknamed the dinosaur squirrel. <laughs> Maybe they think she's an injured cousin. Looks like the whole gang's on the move. Although the gliders are much more graceful than little Ambo. They're moving through the treetops, following the river below them. Tuppy must be just above them by now. This race just got a whole lot tighter. The river crossing will be easy for Tuppy. She can fly right over it. But that's going to be a tough distance for Ambo to glide across. The water looks deep and the current is strong. I'm guessing Ambo's not built for backstroke. Correct. The sugar gliders are getting anxious as Ambo approaches the river. They're trying to call her back. It looks like she's found a branch to leap from. She's going for us. No, she's not going to make it. Oh, Ambo's in the water. And the whole rainforest knows about it. She's being carried downstream towards... A waterfall! The waterfall will deliver her to the bottom of the stony gorge where the finish line waits. But that's too high to fall from. The rocks are too slippery. She can't grab onto anything. Here come the falls! Oh, no! She's gone over! Oh, I don't believe it. Tuppy has scooped Ambo out of the air just as she went over the waterfall. She's got her in her spear mouth. Oh, Tuppy and all pterosaurs really have excellent vision. 
This is exactly what she would have done millions of years ago. Flown high above the water, looking for fish to scoop up and trap inside her interlocking teeth. Yeah, but that's just fish, right? She wouldn't eat, Ambo, would she? Well, we think she ate a lot of things. You know, fish, snails, turtles, maybe dinosaurs. What? I mean, maybe just the occasional baby Manabarasaurus. Oh, surely there's a rule against eating the competition. Anything goes? Oh, hang in there, Ambo. Yes, she is hanging in there. Her curved claws are locking around Tuppy's teeth. She's clinging on and not letting go. This is messing with Tuppy's balance. She's dropping down into the gorge. Well, there's the finish line. Is she going to scoot? Almost there. If Ambo was in Tuppy's mouth as she crossed the line, I mean, is it a, a tie? Tuppy spat Ambo safely into the trees and her sugar glider gal pals are making sure she's OK. I'm getting an update here. This is a dino dome first, folks. We have a disqualification. Tabunaga Shorai has been disqualified for attempting to ingest her fellow racer. And Bopterix wins by default. Well, you can't really blame Tuppy. It's just her nature. Yeah, maybe she was just trying to help. We don't know if she was actually going to eat her. You keep telling yourself that, Tim. And while you're at it, you can give the Domers the recap in the action replay. It was a daring dash through the Daintree today. Ambo was right at home in the rainforest and took an early lead while Tuppy was tied down by the terrain. After vanquishing the vines, Tuppy made up ground by taking to the skies. Ambo had a sweet setback with social sugar gliders before crash landing in a raging river. Tuppy swooped in and snatched Ambo from mid-air, carrying her over the finish line, but was disqualified for attempting to consume the competition. How's Ambo feeling now, Amanda? She seems fine, but the sugar gliders won't let me near her. I think they're feeling protective of their new friend. OK, I'm just going to leave the trophy here and back away slowly. Ah! Are you OK? I slipped on the river rocks and kicked the trophy into the water. Oh, and now Tuppy swooped down and nicked it. <laughs> like I said, it's in her nature. She can't help it. I don't think Ambo minds. Join us next week, Domers, for another action-packed race through a mystery course in the greatest race of all time, the Dino Dome! No dinosaurs were harmed in the making of Dino Dome as they were all extinct. Therefore, all sounds were made by people and animals, including elephants, goats, honey badgers, pugs and camels. Yes, camels.